Hey folks, it's time for another education moment and uh, this week I thought that I would share like a little inspiration that I got when I was out on a hike with my family. We decided that we were going to go, well, when I say we, I mean me and my wife decided the kids would never decide to do anything like this, but we decided that we were going to take a hike up Dimple Hill. Um, a great local hike. It's um, It's got one side that's pretty easy to hike and another side that's a little bit challenging. So we're going to do the easy side. And uh, it's about a um, seven mile round trip, right? Out in McDonald Dunn Forest. And so here's a map of, uh, you know, where we were and what we were doing. So we started uh, down, if you look at the bottom of that map, uh, we started down around uh, Oak Creek and where it says you are here we got to a point in the walk where everybody stopped and they said dad you know we've really gone far enough <laughs> we don't need to go any further we had a good walk we got to see some nature uh, the dog got to run around for a bit off the leash and uh, we have other things that we want to do we've got friends that we're gonna hang out with and I've already hit my step goal and man that looks far and the sun is getting low and we just had all of the reasons not to keep going and uh, I know that it's a really good hike and that like it's a really beautiful sunset and it's a really great trip and there was really no reason that we couldn't do it and so I, uh, I decided that we were just gonna go ahead and press on and so it got me to thinking about um, you know other things where we kind of maybe hit that that mile post or something like part way through a journey or we look at like a hill that we might have to climb and we say uh, you know what we've come far enough mediocre is pretty good I'm cool with halfway um, we don't need to get all the way to top. I got other stuff to do other really important things to do and um, we we try and talk ourselves out of doing something that like is really really good for us and something that ends up really really being beautiful like here we are at the top of the of the mountain and look at all those smiles right and uh, but it's all the excuses at the bottom of the hill that could prevent us from getting uh, to something like this and so the thought that I had is we were walking up and I think at this point I was carrying the dog in the backpack the thought that I had was when I come up or I bump up against kind of some obstacles in life or some things where I really start making reasons and excuses as to uh, why this is far enough, I don't need to go any further, um, this thing is more important, that's when I really just need to stop and just move forward, right? Um, because it's so much work to make up the excuses and really what I'm doing is I'm talking myself out of something that is good for me. And so uh, that's the same in hiking. It's definitely true in my business. Uh, when uh, in, in my business, I really only get paid for one thing. And you might think, oh yeah, you get paid for treatments or adjusting people or whatever. That's not, that's not really it. If you want your business to survive, the thing that you get paid for is paperwork because that's when insurance companies pay you, is when you are doing the paperwork, submitting the bills and all that kind of stuff. It also happens to be my least favorite part of my job. And so that's where I spend all my energy making all my excuses and all of my delays is around that one piece where if I just put all those aside and I did the work, then I get to be where I want to be. Now, so um, so that's how it applies to business. Let's talk about how this applies to B&I. We really care about this. Okay, We care about being in the green. So when we look at traffic lights, um, this isn't just an arbitrary kind of place or an arbitrary set of things that we do. Um, where we are, whether we're green, yellow, red, it really um, indicates what our attitude is about our involvement in B&I. So I tried to kind of capture this in the next few slides. So if you are in the red, you are basically counting on luck, right? So there's people who have been in the red, who have still gotten referrals, who have still done business, who still make their money back in a chapter. But what it is when they do that is they are counting on just getting lucky. They aren't uh, taking control of their fate or anything like that. 
Um, these are people who, even though they've put in the money and, and the time to invest in being a member of the chapter, uh, they are not willing to invest anymore. They, they say, well, I put in my money and I'm just going to sit back and wait and see what happens. Um, as if they bought like a Facebook ad or like a Google ad or something like that, or they've put up a billboard. And that's what they see their involvement in, in B&I as is, I'm putting out this billboard and darn it, it better make me some money in return. Um, when really, when you look around the chapter, you have a whole bunch of people who have put in exactly the same amount of money as, as you. And so if that's all the involvement you're willing to put in, great, you're gonna be counting on luck to, to get some business. Um, another attitude that kind of gets encapsulated here is when I get something, then I'm going to give back. And normally, when pe in my experience, when people are like this and they finally do get something, let's say that they get a hundred, a hundred whatever, right? Maybe a hundred dollars. So if they get a hundred dollars worth of business, then they will give one dollar uh, back. And so that that's the thing. When we sit back and we wait to get something, what we typically give in return is is a very little value and a lot of that is it's the mentality that we're kind of brought up around whenever it comes to shopping looking for bargains and things like that i want to get something for the lowest possible price like i found a fantastic deal on hoodies today and so i bought a bunch of them and every time i was giving way less than than what the hoodies were worth. And so that felt great. And for me, that's a great value as a shopper. And so people who hang out in the red, sometimes they have this attitude like they are in b &I shopping. And I want to put out as little as possible and get something back. And so they wait for something first and then they give back very, very little. Okay. And so I'll contrast that with what it's like to be in the green later. The other attitude that we tend to get here is I am a special case. I'm new, or um, my business doesn't work like everybody else's business, or um, you know I have a situation with my family, or or I have a situation with my employees, or um, there's some things that I don't like to do. And really, the honest truth is that everybody's a special case. Um, no, but no two businesses are the same. No two business owners or managers are the same. Everybody is a special case, and that's exactly why we're here, is because we want to get access to exactly what we need. And so we need to use BNI for those opportunities to kind of satisfy our uniqueness. Now, people will hang out in the red, and they'll think that I'm a special case, I deserve a special consideration, um, when really the truth is that that's how it is for everybody. The difference is that some people are willing to put in the work. Sometimes that work is just tracking the work that they've already done. Other times that work is getting out and meeting somebody, getting out and talking to somebody, inviting somebody to a meeting, um, doing the education, whatever it is that's holding you back. They think I'm a special case and I don't need to. And so they end up missing a lot of the rewards. And the truth is that people who are in the red, if you remember previously, I said it's about 90% of the people that end up leaving B&I um, fall in the yellow or in the red. So we get concerned about people in the red because these are people that are on their way out of the chapter. And a lot of times they're sitting there and they're thinking, when is when is this going to start for me? What, they don't realize that they're, they're heading the wrong direction. So, okay, enough about the red. Let's move on to the yellow. Now, I, the most common thing that I think happens when people get in the yellow is that they're just distracted, right? It's not that um, they're not very good at B&I because we get some people who are actually really great B&I members, but they land in the yellow sometimes. I've landed in the yellow sometimes. And it's, and it's not because I don't have good relationships or because I don't believe that B&I works. It's typically because of distraction. Okay, so common things are I'm too busy to track my stats. That's what I fall into a lot. You know, I'm doing things, I'm meeting with people, I'm I'm sending referrals, I'm getting business, but uh, it just doesn't become a priority to put that business into the system, which is very very important because what we can track, we can measure, and what we can measure, we can improve. And so that's actually going to be, um, 
I'm going to go into more detail on that in a future um, extended education. And I think I've got a good one. I, I also came up with that one on this hike too. But um, so that that's one of the reasons people end up in the yellow. They feel like they're too busy to track their stats. And it really doesn't take that long to track stats. It's just you have to make it a priority. You have to put it at the front of the line. And if you can't put it at the front of the line, then what you need to do is you need to carve out a time where it's like this is the 30 minutes I spend doing the stats. And so you can get a bunch of important things done first, but when it comes to tracking your stats, this is my dedicated, consecrated time where I put in the stats. And that's how you get out of the yellow. Um, another attitude is I can do most of the stuff that it takes to get into the green, but XYZ is uncomfortable. Like, I don't feel comfortable inviting people to meetings or, you know, I just, I don't like the podcast or, um, you know, I can't, I, I can't find where to get education about BNI. And I mean, it's so bad that I can't even Google it. I honestly, like <laughs> when, when I was learning about BNI and my first stint as education coordinator, uh, there is so much that if you want to know about BNI, you can just Google it or you can look around on the, the BNI website and most of the stuff is right there. And so it's just it's our discomfort that keeps us from being successful. And people don't get successful by doing comfortable things. OK, so you, you have to people who are in the yellow, they they want to be comfortable. Right. And that's and that they're that's their big that's their big concern. Also, um, this last point, I'm focused on my business or family or life or et cetera, and I'm not focused on networking. And so uh, this isn't to say that those other things aren't important. You know, you're in BNI because of your business. You're in BNI because of your family, because of your life. And so it's not that those things aren't important, but your network also needs to be important because your network really does serve those other things. I know I found um, great success in my business because I've spent time focusing on my network. Um, my family has benefited from me spending time focusing on my network. Um, my personal development, uh, my relationships, my happiness increases because of some of the things from my network. And so some of the best people that I know are people that are in this group. And so um, but it's not to say that, uh, so it's not to say that that's totally like, like I can't understand it, but, uh, this is just why some people wind up in the yellow and it's a really common thing. Sometimes we get a little burned out, but this is just a reminder. So if you find yourself there, you can look at these things and say, which one of these things is it for me? And, and what can I do to kind of move off that plateau? Finally. Uh, we get to the green. And so these are people who are saying, I'm cultivating the value of my membership. So like I mentioned in the beginning, we all pay to be here and we pay money, we pay time, we pay effort. But these are the attitudes that people in the green have. Tracking information helps me to make sure I'm keeping my commitment. Most of the people who are in the green, they'll, they'll, one of the first reasons they'll tell you for, well, why are you in the green? You know, why is it important to you to be in the green? Most of them will talk about their commitment, that when they joined BNI, they made a commitment to give and then gain. They made a commitment to show up to meetings. They made a commitment to give good referrals. Uh, they feel committed to people in their power team. They feel committed to uh, people in their contact sphere. And so um, when people are in the green, they're honoring that commitment that they've made. And that really feels good. It feels consistent and it makes it more comfortable. Oh, there's that word again to, to be a member of the chapter. Um, second attitude, I'm trying to give more than I receive, but I'm receiving a lot. So people who are in the green actually find that it's kind of tough to keep up with, uh, with giving more than they're receiving because when you're in the green and you're doing the things day in, day out, month after month, then it develops a sense of authenticity about you. And people really work hard for you to give you what you need and what you ask for because they see that you're being authentic and they want to reward that. And if, and if nothing else, if it's not like, oh, I want to reward them for being authentic, people are drawn to, to folks who are successful, uh, for people who uh, they're drawn to people who are making it work for them because they're hoping that that will rub off on them. So whenever you're doing this, um, 
you f you'll find that as you give and give more and more and more, people want to give to you a lot. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a real synergistic thing. So if I'm in a group of 30 people and I'm trying to outgive 29 other people, man, that's, that's, that's not an easy task. But that's really what we should be working for the whole time. And then finally, doing the, un the uncomfortable things helps me and my network slash business to grow. And uh, that really is the truth. Anybody in the green can tell you that they have at least one of those categories that really is not comfortable for them, but they do it because they recognize the growth and the success that comes with it. And so, um, so that's really the that's really the difference. You know, it's about your attitude, your level of commitment, where you are with these different things, and as you learn to master that then that's when you really start to see the fruits that uh, the BNI has to offer. And so this month, as we all focus on getting into the green, um, you can start, some people do find just looking at, okay, this category needs fixing. And so they go and they fix it, right? Other people, this is where they need to start, is where is my mindset? How am I thinking of the BNI membership? And if you can just get to this green and you're thinking of these things, and you see some of the attitudes in the red and yellow and you can just abandon those, then it becomes really easy to develop the numbers, right? To find the referrals, to show up to meetings and, and everything like that. One more thing that I'll add is um, it's something that's not tracked, but something that's really important, especially in our chapter, is uh, the, the, first, the first category is meeting attendance, right? Um, and we all tend to do really, really well with that. But think about meeting attendance in, in this mindset. There's showing up to a meeting, and then there's showing up to a meeting on time, staying the whole time, and being engaged the whole time. And that truly is attendance, and it comes with its own rewards. Again, that's the topic of a, of a future education moment, so I won't get too deep into that. Anyway, so I hope that that is helpful. And... Um, yeah, that's your extended education for the week. So uh, that's about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, go out, find a couple other 20-minute things to do. And uh, this counts as an hour of CEUs. And then you track it because you're not distracted. All right. Talk to you later.